Bonafide, bonafide hustler here. Bonafide hustler here. All right, all right. Everyone together. Everyone together. On the count of three, we're gonna bonafide hustlers here. Bonafide hustlers here. And we're gonna take a look at what I found last weekend. coming to you live from my garage. An echoey ass garage. It's still a really nice day in Austin, Texas. So let's kind of cut right to it. What did I find this past weekend? And as you guys know from my previous video, I had a pretty good weekend. So you gotta stay persistent out there guys, because if you stay persistent, it'll eventually come along. The stuff I found last weekend was really cool stuff. Some of it was really, really rare. But I still got, as a whole, some insane freaking deals. And it's awesome. So one of the deals, if you guys and girls out there are already distracted, you're probably looking at my shirt going, dude, is that who I think it is? Yes. And you should know who this is, so go ahead and comment down below if you know who this is. But this is a totally cool retro, not retro shirt, but a shirt with a really cool retro dude on it. So if you think you know who this guy is, go ahead and comment that below. But this is awesome. This was a dollar. But we'll get to that. Um, the very first sale that I went to, I found one of these Panasonic auto reverse um, Walkman kind of things. I always pick up Walkmans. These things are dirt cheap. They're usually 50 cents to like a dollar. Um, I'll pay up to about four bucks for just about any kind of Walkman. I love to test the waters and um, I kind of look at these things the same way that I look at vintage calculators, for example. Vintage calculators, you know, they're always like a dollar all the way up to like five bucks, but some of those suckers can get up to like 50 or 100 bucks on resale. But most of them wash out in right around the $20 range. So. Here's a Panasonic one right here. Probably gonna get about 20 bucks for it. Pretty cool, hopefully it works. Um, it's very cool because it's, you know, it's kinda like this one. I picked this one up about two weeks ago. And I'm still doing a little bit more research on this one, but I picked this one up for dirt cheap as well. Um, so I like getting vintage Walkmans and I just wanna make sure that they, I mean, 80% of them pretty much work just fine. Um, the other 20% either have issues because they eat tapes or one of the channels in the uh, ear thing doesn't work, so maybe that's a deal with the port down there, but I don't mess with that. People buy those things broken, so just so you know. Okay, what else did I find? Later on in the day, I came across that freaking epic garage sale that had skateboards, surfboards, and blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to show you some of the decks that I found. This is pretty cool. Old Palo Peralta. Not an old deck, but a reissue deck. Really good condition. I'll tell you what I paid for all this stuff after. And it's gonna blow your mind. I got this Santa Cruz um, Roscop board right here. And these all have independent trucks, indies. I like to call them indies as short. That's usually what the skate community calls them, are indie trucks. These are the trucks of the skateboard right here. If you see a, um, you know, something that says independent truck company, those are really, really, really good trucks. I mean, a lot of really good skaters use indies as their truck choice. And if you look at the wheels, if you get Palo Peralta wheels and everything like that, and if the bearings look kind of reddish, then you are looking at a pretty good setup. Now this right here is a full setup of a skateboard. It's not quite vintage, but it's very, very sought after. Um, you know, this in a complete state right here could fetch about a hundred bucks right on Craigslist and it, it works real well. I'm gonna take this thing probably to the skate bowl in about two weeks after I come back from Puerto Rico. Um, I don't want to get hurt before I get on the trip to Puerto Rico. So that guy, I got this board right here. And I got this board too. Look how cool that is. Indie trucks as well. Okay, this one has some rail sliders right here. Um, this one right here is a, I think a Santa Cruz as well, if I'm not mistaken. Um, pretty cool board. This is a Jeff Kendall um, artwork kind of thing. And this one's running Indies with uh, Palo Peralto rat bones with Bones Red's bearings. So that's really cool. And that is still part of the deal. Now check out this crap. I know you guys saw what was in my car. And it's really neat. So let's go take a look at the surfboards. All right, guys. So here we are on the side of my house. And I want to show you these surfboards a little bit closer up. Surf surfboards. Now, the more expensive of the two is probably this one, the Stewart. This is a Stewart surfboard. Stewart is a really, really good manufacturer of surfboards, even to current day. And they really make amazing longboards. But here's one of their short boards with a hydro hull. Okay, the hydro hull. I don't know if you can see that. Okay. So the hydro hole was one of their little patented things that they actually started to make back in like 1984. This thing's in really, really awesome condition. It's got a tri-fin back, okay? 
And when you're dealing with surfboards, a lot of times the condition basically means is it ding free or has it had any repairs. This one has a very small repair at the very bottom, um, but it's really, really well done. So I think this one's going to be bringing in some pretty good money. Okay, so here's another one, which I really like. This one's a little bit more weird. It's a 7 foot 1 Mike Myers, a designer out of Texas. Um, really cool design. Look at that splatter paint. Really neat. And this one has some cool pink tips. But then here's what's really interesting. This one actually says Clark Foam. Do you see that? Okay. So Clark Foam was one of the lead foam manufacturers like back in the day for surfboards. And I want to say back in the day, I want to say about three or four years ago, Clark Foam basically shut down. So a lot of people tried to buy the blank deck so they could sur uh, so they could actually carve some more surfboards out of it. But for the most part, if you're finding any kind of surfboards that are still made of Clark Foam or vintage ones, those are very sought after boards. So, just a rule of thumb, this one's in immaculate condition. No dings, nothing. Awesome condition. And since it came from like a Texas shaper, not a California one, or a, you know, East Coast one, then this one's probably going to be, I don't know, market value of somewhere between $200 to maybe $300 because it's also a Clark foam board as well. And that Stuart one that I showed you before could be a Clark foam one as well. I just got to do a little bit more, um, you know, research into it and everything like that. So, really awesome surfboard deals. Um, let's get back to the garage. Those are freaking epic! I love surfboards. Surfing is like my passion, it really is. You would think it'd be bikes and everything, but honestly, I love the water and I love surfing more than anything in my entire life, including this dude. It's about to dunk on your ass. All right, so I got all that stuff for a hundred freaking dollars. That's amazing, right? If I play my cards out right and I advertise, let's say, the Roscoff, the blue Roscoff skateboard right there, I could probably do a hundred bucks on that on Craigslist all day long. Everything else is just profit. So my speculation is that the, uh, one of the surfboards I'm probably going to ship off to my parents' house in California, thinking. Um, and the other surfboard, the Mike Stewart one, which was the shorter one of the two, um, that one's probably got a market value of somewhere between $200 and $300. It's in very, very good shape. Um, the other skateboard that you saw, the black one, probably has a market value of around $80 to $100. And uh, the actual blank deck right there, the very first thing, the really colorful Palo Peralta deck, that one probably has a market value of around 20 to 30 bucks. So I think I did pretty damn well on that one little haul. Pretty cool. So just stay persistent out there. You never know what's around the corner when you hustle. Hustling's like, you know, like garage sales for me are like Christmas Eve's, mornings, whatever you want to call it, where you're kind of picking away the present because you don't know what the hell's under that wrapping, but that's what it feels like sometimes early in the morning in these mornings in Austin, Texas. You just never know what you're going to find. So I urge everyone out there to at least Go take some time out of your busy, you know, mornings, maybe not busy, and go look at some garage sales. You never know what you're going to find. I have found some cool, crazy stuff. So later in the day, I found myself in another garage sale, and look what I found. Whoa, cool, a really awesome Ibanez guitar for 40 bucks, Ibanez being the brand. Now, this is an electric acoustic guitar, and how can you tell? Because it looks like an acoustic guitar right here. Here's the first sign. It's a little bit thinner than you usually see on actual guitars, okay? Um, and I'm talking about acoustic guitars, so that's definitely about half as thin. And then, if you look here, you can see all the stuff that um, regulates with the pickups and all that junk. So that's how you know. There's a battery door right here, and then there's the stuff to like, you know, use your bass, your treble, your mid-range, how to alter it, um, and then a, just a, a phaser button of some sort, and as well as a master volume switch. So there you go. So if you look down here, You'll also find the actual place where the jack goes into that goes into your amplifier. This thing's a sweet score. Look at this. I mean, it's just in really awesome condition. I like it. I really do. But I got a treat for you guys. You know, there's this really awesome song that I like. That uh, it brings it really back for me, I guess you could say. And uh, it gets all the ladies, by the way. And it goes a little bit something like this. Bonafide Hustler here. And we're going to talk about guitars. Alright, that's all I got. If you guys want a copy of that song, um, just pay me any amount of money you want to to my PayPal account. That would be awesome. And uh, it's probably going to get a Grammy one day. I know. Trust me. I know. And I hope you really like that song. I know. It's like head explosion, right? Too freaking good. This is the best stuff, you know. I know. Trust me. I know. I know. I know. 
Okay, so later on the day, as I was heading out of that um, one part of town where I found that guitar, I also found these shoes. These are Nikes, and this came from a church garage sale. I uh, don't know what kind of Nikes, they're really odd looking, but they kind of have a woven top to them. Casual, hiker boot, whatever you want to call it, pretty cool, one dollar. In the same church uh, garage sale, estate sale, found myself looking at these. Old Zepco reels, um, really kind of heavy for a fishing reel kind of thing. Um, got them all for about three bucks, who knows, right? I'm experimenting on this stuff. I would expect to maybe make about 20 to 30. And as soon as I list these suckers on eBay, I'll probably throw them in my booth as well. So, double the exposure, why not? Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you guys that when I found that guitar, I also found these cameras right here. This is a Nikon body right here. A nice little, look, maybe a steel or aluminum type body. Um, all the speeds work and everything. I'll show you guys in another video how to test out a camera. All the speeds work and everything, and presumably the actual light meter works as well but the shutter and everything works perfectly fine. Now this is an actual camera body. As you can see, there's no lens attached to it. This part right here is where the lens will go to. You can put different lenses. This is still a beauty. I picked this sucker up for, I believe, five bucks. And then I also bought this guy for about, I think a dollar, maybe it was two bucks. It's a Yashica Broken MG1. Okay, it's broken because the little viewfinder thing in here has a crack. The battery door is gone. Um, for the most part, people are still looking for bodies for these cameras, if not, you know, maybe to take the lens off. So that's why I bought it, so we'll see. And I'll put it in my antique booth as well as it's, you know, sitting there on eBay. So I always swing on little things like that because that's how you can learn about things that you don't know too much about. But I know a little bit about vintage cameras. I mean, I know a fair amount enough to make money. I just like it when something's so low priced to where I can experiment. So that's a lot of fun. And the last thing I picked up that day was this. Keen sandals from Goodwill. These were, I think, $7. So that's pretty neat. Um, hoping to fetch about a solid 20 or 30 in my pocket out of those after everything's all said and done and the shipping and everything like that. Okay, so this is a short video. I just wanted to make sure that you guys saw all the stuff that I found. Um, if you do like the Bonafide Hustler, don't forget to show some hustler love by liking, commenting, and subscribing to my channel. And also find me on Facebook, The Bonafide Hustler. That's right, I'm on Facebook, The Bonafide Hustler. And so much stuff goes down over there, if you subscribe to my Facebook as well, or like it if you want to say, um, you're going to get to see a lot of the cool pictures of things that I hustle throughout the week, a lot of more close-ups of things like this, a little bit more of an explanation of why I bought it, and just random things that I find. So it's a definitely a good thing to go check out and like. Um, I'm also on Twitter too, under YouTube Hustler, so check that out. I also update my Twitter feed about once or twice a day, so that's pretty cool as well. Um, Thanks for all the support, really cool. And um, if you guys do want to um, interact with the Bonafide Hustler, make sure to comment below. And if you want to have some specialized questions addressed, then find me on Facebook. Typically I'm over there answering questions pretty late at night. So I'm out here to help you guys. Take it easy, bye.